Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church as we celebrate Good Friday, the day in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ goes to the cross, suffers and dies, sheds his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. While on the cross, Jesus says, it is finished. Tonight, we pick up the last words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he commends his spirit to God the Father. We gather in worship and praise. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, Merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and delivered into the hands of sinful men, to suffer death upon the cross through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus went out, bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now fulfilled, said, To fulfill the scriptures, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. From Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. 
This is our text. These words are the last from the cross and also fulfill what the psalmist says of Christ. Typically, when we think of the passion of the Christ and the psalms that relate to his suffering and death, we think of Psalm 22 and Psalm 69. Both of these psalms are lament psalms. You know, lament psalms are psalms that are crying out, crying out in pain, crying out in agony, crying out in anguish. Very appropriate, wouldn't you think, with Jesus dying on the cross. However, the words of Jesus here committing into the Father's hands his spirit is not from a lament psalm, but from a psalm of trust. From Psalm chapter 31, verse 5, Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. This means that Christ Jesus trusts God, the Father, to commit his spirit. With the separation of the body from the soul, which we would understand as death, so when Jesus is about to die, he does not have fear, but trust. Trusting that God is going to take care of everything. Let's hear some of these other trust verses that come from Psalm 31. The first verse, In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Verse 3, for you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. Verse 14, but I trust in you, O Lord, I say you are my God. Verse 19, oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. And finally, verse 24, be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. This is truly a psalm of trust. Moments from breathing his last breath, there is no fear of Jesus, but trust in God above all things. The question for us is, do you trust in God for all things, especially for both body and soul? You see, death is not a natural thing. Death is a byproduct of sin from our first parents of Adam and Eve. But now that death is before us, do we still trust in God? We might think so for our soul, but what about our body? This current crisis of COVID-19 is a great example of how well do we trust in God? Do we trust in God with our physical life? Do we trust in God with our spiritual life? Both our physical life and our spiritual life are important. By God's design, God created us as body and soul. We don't pit one over the other. Both are part of who we are. Also by God's design is the government who is supposed to be concerned about our body, our physical state as it protects its citizens, whereas the church is supposed to be concerned about our spiritual estate. That's why you're watching this online instead of here in the pews at Peace Lutheran Church in Plainfield, Illinois. You may not get the COVID-19 virus, but we are all going to die, unless, of course, Jesus comes first. Regardless of what comes first, the job of the church is to get you ready to die and to be with Christ. It is good to be ready to die well. I know this may sound a little morbid, but as Christians, we believe that there is a better life with Christ in paradise. So think of it this way, that the church's job is to prepare you for that better life than this one, life eternally with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
That's why Paul writes in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So, going back to COVID-19, if you hear of a Christian who gets the virus, what is your reaction? Sure, we could be praying for them, asking God's blessings to heal them, but overall, we should say, God, be praised. Why? Because of Jesus' death on the cross, all things of life, the good things and the bad things, the sickness and health, life and death, all of it is a blessing. This doesn't mean that we should go and kill ourselves so that we could get this blessing sooner, nor does it mean that we should purposely infect ourselves with the virus. God values the gift of life body and soul. He created you with a body, but when death comes, it is also a gift for then we are with Jesus in paradise. But is that truly what we believe? Do we truly trust God as Jesus trusted God? To say, into your hands I commit my spirit. To trust God even with death? This virus situation is an excellent balance check, so to speak. Are we so worried, clinging on to this life, this body of ours, that we don't want to trust God, no matter what happens? If we get the virus or not, if we live a hundred years or just until tomorrow, if, we trust, if our trust is in God, if our trust is in Jesus who defeated sin, death, and the devil, what do we have to fear? absolutely nothing. I think the psalmist summarizes it best when the psalmist writes in Psalm 116, verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So, we are ready. When we see the virus breaking out, we are ready. We are ready to die because we already are trusting in the Lord, and we are ready to go and serve our neighbor. So we don't let the virus hinder us. We continue to put our faith and trust in God and continue to serve our neighbor. But if you don't trust in the Lord, then this virus situation is truly a panic situation, because all you have is this life in your body and your health. And if the virus takes it away, then you have nothing left at all. We don't have to look too far in today's world to see people in panic mode. But as Christians, we look at Jesus on the cross. We hear his final words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. These words were not spoken in panic, but in victory. Jesus knew how to die well. Trust in God. And in three days, we see that death cannot hold Jesus. More about that on Easter. But we remember Paul's words from Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. We should memorize this verse especially during these days of the virus. We should pray for our government to do its job to protect our lives. We praise God that we have the gospel, which prepares us to die, for we have no fear, because we know and trust that God will take care of us, both in our body and our soul. In his holy name, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.